9pm rolled around and our incident-free welcome party had finally ended. Actually, nursing a very drunk senpai was quite troublesome, but it somehow ended on a good note. くれは本当にあとは任せていいの寝るのが目的じゃないんだけどな。要はそれだけか。なら片付けがあるから失礼するぞ。ああ、クーちゃんだな。うん。Kureha replied and disappeared into the shop, leaving a disappointed, puffy-cheeked Aoi in her wake. Aoi invited herself over after hearing that the two of them had planned a sleepover at Akari's place from the start. Made me feel better knowing Senpai was in good hands for the night. I suggested calling Tamaiko-sensei and sending her home, but Akari shook her head and said that would only inconvenience him. No wonder, in a few hours the fake Ura would appear either at the pine dorms where Senpai lived or the main Sionji residence. With Senpai being wasted, we couldn't afford to let her anywhere near those places. Additionally, Kana and Kumakichi claimed that they needed to take care of something and head it home first. That something was likely meeting up with Sensei and guarding the mystic treasure. Yeah, take care of Aoi for me. I appreciate the thought, but Akari and Aoi would probably give me nothing but dirty looks all night. Akari's hips began to quiver as she succumbed to Senpai's warm embrace and leaned against her. The senpai buried her face into Akari's chest and nuzzled her cheeks against them, leaving Akari no choice but to tremble and cry out in response. This is... Two red-faced hotties were staring deep into each other's eyes. Had I set foot into the forbidden flower garden? Senpai, please let me join in too. Again? Go! Not again, my eyes! Damn it! Fine. Aoi sighed, dragging a very drunk senpai and practically paralyzed Akari behind her. Were they really going to be alright? Sure, nothing bad would happen with Akari around, but it appeared she was down for the count. As an aside, I did ask Aoi to keep watch over them both, considering it was possible senpai might be carrying the mystic treasure on her person. In the meantime, I would stake out the Sionji residence. 
It sucked not knowing what the mystic treasure in question looked like, but I did know that the fake Uda would appear at 11 pm. Either way, I knew everything would work out if I caught the fake Uda. Yet another mission to cross off the list. What the? That noise just came from inside the tea kettle. Did something happen to Koreha? I was sure she'd complain if I went in, but I couldn't just ignore her. Helping those in need was all part of Phantom Thief Uda's mission. What's wrong? Did something happen? The bell above the front door chimed as I stormed inside. I cried out and scanned my surroundings when... <coughs> when she saw my face, Kureha instantly went pale. There were pieces of broken plates scattered all around her feet. Thank goodness, looked like she just dropped some plates. I don't know what happened, but I think I can take a guess. I'll grab a broom, so stay put. Without waiting for Kureha's approval, I headed to the back room to grab a broom and dustpan and use them to sweep up the play charts. It seemed I'd managed to prevent her from getting hurt. That should do it. You can move now. Maybe not, but I couldn't just ignore someone in need when they're right in front of me. Ah, right, right, my bad. Ku Miao can handle anything she sets her mind to. That's what you wanted to say, though, wasn't it? You idiot! The only reason why you dropped those plates is because you're trying to do everything by yourself. Let me guess, you offered to stay and clean up out of the kindness of your heart, but it was surprisingly tough and you felt rushed. Ah, so you were rushing. <laughs> it looked like Ureha had no intention of asking for anyone's help. However, perhaps this was my chance to help improve her impression of me. Surely helping out a lone waitress who worked late into the night would score me a few brownie points. There was still some time until 11pm and I was curious about the tea kettle. A quick detour should be okay. Don't say that. If you are that pressed for time, let me help you clean up. Just hoping it would help your impression of me a little. I'm not expecting anything more than that, so don't worry. I'm sensing some hostility there, but thanks. I'll get right to it then. I'm short on time myself. Sorry, it's in my nature not to ignore someone in trouble. Not really in trouble, right? You already said as much. Kureha must have realized that going and back forth like this was a waste of time, as she poofed up her cheeks and grabbed a broom. Now that I'd gotten permission from Chief Kureha, I started collecting the dirty dishes and carried them to the sink. By working together, cleaning took no time at all and was over in a flash. Right? It's like I told you at the bathhouse. Two people are a lot more efficient than one. Says the person who broke all of those plates. Oh yeah? No, no, I do. Even Akari said you're a huge help around here, and I'm sure you do good work. Um, 
Oh, someone looks embarrassed. <laughs> Kuneha turned away angrily, but she couldn't hide her bright red cheeks. She really was a good, honest person to her core. I was sure of it, despite everything she said. She was covering for Akari. So, you're pressed for time? Are you heading to the pajama party after all? Mission! That? Kureha planted a hand on her hip and pointed up to the tea kettle hanging from the ceiling with the other. Does that thing need to be cleaned too? Really? Talk about raw deal. There's no way a small fry like you could reach the ceiling with those kitty hands. Can they? I'd love to see you try. You really need to think about this stuff before you agree to do it. Man, Kurehatan was adorable. She was like a tiny animal. Yeah, I could see that. There we go. With Kureha watching from the sidelines, I retrieved a step ladder from storage and set it up underneath the tea kettle. Now one of us needed to go up there and take it down. Okay, I'll keep it in mind. Kureha nodded, seemingly satisfied with my answer, before stepping up on the ladder and reaching for the tea kettle. She knelt on the top step, but wasn't quite tall enough to reach the hanging object. Kureha stretched in an attempt to close the distance. She extended both of her arms as far as they could go and let out an adorable noise, but it still wasn't enough. Her fingers brushed against the belly of the tea kettle and made it swing to and fro, but nothing more. Hey, maybe I should go up there instead? That would be easier. See what? Ah. Oh, I can see! They're in full view! Under Kurea's skirt wear a pair of white and green panties, almost like the ones you'd see in Stripe Witches! Striped panties really are great! They're the ultimate panties that Lilith created. Wow, you idiot! If you keep doing that, then... Look out! Gah. Just as I thought, Kureha lost her balance at the top of the stepladder and her butt crashed into me, leaving me groaning beneath her on the floor. At the same time, I heard a loud crash from beside me. The sound. Could it be? Kureha scrambled to her feet and rushed over to the source of the crash. The tea kettle was pinned underneath the stepladder. Kureha removed the ladder and examined the large ornament, only to discover a minor crack on its side. Well, I'm sorry. We'll apologize to her together. What? Whose voice is that? Uh, that wasn't you? 
both of us turned our heads sideways. Huh? <laughs> then where did that voice just come from? What the fuck? It's a tanuki. Gah! What the hell is that? Kureha immediately let go of the kettle, moved some distance away and put up her guard. Just as she said, tanuki-looking limbs had sprouted from the kettle. To top it all off, it could move freely and talk. Tea kettle! The tanuki bodied kettle, otherwise known as tea kettle, gazed at us with round eyes. This thing was an autonomous mystic treasure. It looked like the fall had activated it somehow. Kureha was simply at a loss for words. I could tell she was trying to wrap her head around the situation and eyed it cautiously. As the saying went, let sleeping dogs lie. Best to just put it back to sleep and leave it be. Uh, hold on, don't do anything stupid. There's no telling what will happen. What is your goal? Hmm? What was that? While Kureha and I argued, Tea Kettle let out a strange noise and set its fiery gaze on Kureha's lower body. What the? Is your target her panties or something? It's so fast! Tea Kettle was nimble on its feet, leaving a bewildered Kureha in its wake as it bolted out the nearest window. And in its hands... <laughs> it happened in an instant. Tea Kettle had skillfully stolen Kureha's undergarments and stowed them away inside its pot. Being able to instantaneously steal someone's underwear without arousing any suspicion from its target, simply astounding. Looks like you did good work. Just as she was about to approach Tea Kettle, Kureha quickly held down her skirt to try and hide her most precious spot. Tea Kettle's eyes suddenly glowed bright red. It retracted its limbs and began to rotate at high speed. The Pokemon. Huh? For real? <laughs> Man, shy girls are always a welcome sight. <laughs> oh, you're right. Hey, Tea Kettle, be a good boy and give back Kureha's underwear. What was that, you piece of junk, Tanuki? War. Fumes shot out from the bottom of the rotating tea kettle and it launched itself into the air like a missile. It broke through the window and flew off across the sky in an instant. Uh, hey, I'll see it again if you move around too much. You stay here for now. You can't walk around like that. 
I promise I'll make it up to you and get your panties back. Ah, almost saw it again. Ha ha ha, like I said, don't push your luck like that. Later. I left Kureha behind at the cafe and quickly chased after tea kettle. This had turned into a pretty ridiculous detour, but for now, retrieving Kudeha's underwear took priority. Wait for me, striped panties! I'll get you back before you get cold! <laughs>